come to life on the hulls. Ross Sam, wax on, wax off. <laughs> wax on, wax off. Doing a good job, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie, uh, Ronnie came down to Jervis Bay last week in his 1160 and uh, did we have a storm or what? We had a storm. Yeah, we had, uh, I think Top, we had, Topped out at 42 knots. 42 knots, about 15 inches of rain I think fell on the state and poor Ron and Leslie were stuck out in the bay, not able to hold anchor because there's not very good moorings around this area. And uh, I get this phone call yesterday after a week of him sitting out in the maelstrom on his catamaran and he said, I'd like to come and do some work for you. And I thought, oh, what a great timing. So here he is. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> he's, wax uh, on, wax off. He's putting the last code of release agent on, the TR release. And he's loving it, aren't you, mate? Oh, this is the best I've ever done. <laughs> I've been waiting a lifetime for this. <laughs> you just think how much policy experience you're going to have at the end of this session. Yeah, I know. So I spent the morning buffing off the... Um, the sealer glaze and Ron's putting on the last coat of TR which I'm going to come back to tomorrow and wipe off so this is our final coat eh mate so all the work I'm doing the little bastard's going to wipe it all off <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering why I'm here well it's day one under my new tent and I'm pretty happy, <laughs> I'm not, I'm a damn sight cooler. It is about 10 degrees cooler today, but wow, what a difference this roof's making. Already I'm getting all my stuff I just couldn't get on with out in the, out in the weather. And I, I feel genuinely for all these guys in these boat yards that are working out in the open, they must just die of heat. I mean, I'm a classic British skinned pale Aussie that, uh, that just gets hammered by the sun and anyone working out in the sun, you know, they're just gonna get skin cancers burn up from all their lives like I do. And having this roof, uh, this is the best investment you'll ever make. So I've got to get into this now. This is um, a big problem area and I've been putting it off and putting it off and there's nothing I could do. Uh, the whole nose of the boat here is, is actually broken and even you can see it down in here, the steel reinforcing frame has broken through the nose of the boat so all this has got to come off now these hatches these forward sail lockers that sit above the crash bulkhead are actually have been put in at a later date you can see by the darker gel coat here they've been modified and fitted but i've got a lot of damage around here so i've got to try to get this all fared level and matching um, to the other side and luckily I've got two holes I can actually see what I need to do I can water level it all up and get it all right but for now it's got to be cut off now what I've done here under here I've actually placed an acro prop and lifted this up so that this part here starts to meet this hatch because this hatch is actually integrated into the rest of the deck and it's reasonably level so I'm assuming that this part is still sound structurally apart from a couple of little creases um, and stress cracks it's still at the right level but where we've got our problem is down in here uh, this here as I can just show you it's a bit hard is actually um, not integrated to the deck itself so I need to remove this entire bow section cut it off and it would stand to reason that if I cut it from here across to here then join this part to the hatch and then refit it all i should be able to get it back into shape but um yeah it's going to be a bit of mucking around to do that i'll just show you what's underneath it first right, so i've made a couple of decisions what i'm going to do is i'm going to slice this here and here and allow this to move freely because that's never going to change until i fix that i won't be able to move anything until i cut that out so i'll get a grinder and i'll slice this out and allow it to move up and down see if i can level it up and then remove it Right, so I've got it up with what I would think would be reasonably level and I've matched the gas here. Um, the issue is that it's all binding, so I think the best method will be to cut a probably a five millimeter slot on each side of this wound here and then actually over the top, it's all pretty much matched all the way around here and almost up into there. So by cutting a bit of a gash, it's going to allow it to settle back into place. 
and then I can start to do a bit of repair on it and really get it into place and, and line this up with this because it's not going to settle back um, unless I do that. Hey, after about half an hour of deliberation, John, I've come to a decision. We don't have decisions, you just do it. I'm going to get my grinder and I'm grind, going to grind a five millimetre slot out of here okay. so that I can get this dead level with this and move this over. I right think right. if I do that, I've got room to move. So, because see, I see how it's all binding. Yes. I've got nowhere to go. So if I grind it out by a centimetre in total, yes. then I can repair that and yes. it'll allow me to get this back in place. Because it's actually, look now at, I've got this clamped. Look at that, beautiful, look at the Yeah, level. I think that's right. Yeah, it's just this is twisting up a little bit. Yeah, it is, yeah. I, and that's why I need to get, well, this, see how this here, yes. see how, yeah, this is twisted up. Yes. It's because this is fitting inside. But so if I, once that's fixed and this is lowered, it should all I come I think square. once I let this out a bit, yeah. it'll actually square it a bit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. anyway, that's my plan anyway. But yeah, it's. Because look, see what you've done here, you've broken the crack here too. Yeah, yeah, I'll see that. So you've buffered a join there. Yeah, but that. Yeah, exactly. So this needs to twist. settle down, but yes. I can't settle it until I saw until what was going on over yeah. there. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a mess. So that's it? all, and that worked out all right. That's yeah, it needs to go up at the nose mm. and down at the side to pull this down and this go up. But when I look at this, if this sort of continued, John, this this height here actually continues. Pretty good. Pretty good, and yeah. it, uh, maybe it is twisted and needs to be filled in that side there. No, that's off. Look and see it. Yeah, where you're right, Andy. Not from the outside. This is twisting. I can't. I got it. What? No. Yeah, but then I can't repair it. Yes, you can. No, I can't. No, but you can repair it. Oh. I can't repair it. That's it. Let me do the clamp. That's it. No, 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 no. You've got to come down. You've got it there. I just don't want it to slip off. Go on. Go. This has got to go lower then. It's got to go. Let it down. Let it down. Let this one live. That's it. It's got to go. You can't get it. All right, now we've got it. There you go. She's flush now, mate. No, it's not quite here. Is it? It is in here. here. Yes, it is. Is it? Yep. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's um... So you've gone, if you get up here and have a look. Yeah, but now I can't see whether I'm flush. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Come and check it out. See the gaps here? Yeah, how is it? Mm -hmm. Come and have a look. It's alright, you reckon? Right. Yeah, that's better than what it was. Oh, I'll come up and have a look. The joins have closed up. A lot of walking around. <laughs> Let's go and have a look. So I put in about half a ton of road base here today to try to get me a bit more cleaner working environment. How'd we go? Well, well, it's better than what it was, isn't it? Oh yeah. Speedos, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's separated there. That's actually, and it's flush in there. Mm. Mm. So if you have a look at the, that, that's gone flush. Yep, yep. So you can actually glass underneath there, but look at your big gap. Where you've cut it out. Yeah, that's okay. I can fix that's okay. That. Oh yeah, that's that's the idea. And now this is what I was talking about. See how this is higher than this. Look yeah, at that over there. Is yeah. that the same? I think. Um, when I look at this one. So now I've got a really nice, sort of probably a two centimetre wide V-shaped chasm. And, uh, and now I'm going to back it with some tape on the other side. And then I'll fill this with Techniglue. And that way I'll get my body back with, uh, without structure. All I'm trying to do is glue it together. And before I pull all these clamps down, I'm going to lay a heap of glass over this tomorrow once that Techniglue is um, uh, set to 
rebuild this and I'll also have to join it back to this steel bar so I'll have to somehow work out a, a sleeve that slides on and then glass it back on and that'll support the whole thing in place before I remove any of my acro props or anything but yeah the the repair process on this is going to take some time probably a couple a few days just to get it all right but what will happen is I can then move on with the other stuff pretty quickly this one's the one Before I can affect a repair from the outside, I need to make sure that the epoxy is not going to spew in here and, and sort of go everywhere in here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a very clean surface on the inside, which means that all along here is going to have to be pretty well scrubbed clean. Now this is the cosmetic part, so what I'm aiming for is structure before cosmetic, and uh, that's always the process when you're fiberglassing is that the structure needs to be sound the cosmetic can be repaired, restored uh, at a later date. So I've got a couple of issues here, I've got a little crack here, big crack along here. What I don't want is epoxy spewing out into here and then I'm going to have to remove it before I can start again. So if I can stop that and how I'm going to do that, I'll give it a clean and then I'm going to apply some tape to actually form almost a reverse mould in here in this radius all the way round which will stop that epoxy from coming through. Now, what I hadn't thought of when I put the bracing on here was that I don't want it sticking to the wood, so that's gonna be a bit of a problem over there. So I might need to remove some of these clamps uh, a couple of times just to get tape in behind it so that I don't have epoxy sticking to these pieces of timber that I've got here clamping it all together. But yes, firstly start off with a good clean surface. And what's really pleasing is that this is almost ready to lay up on it. Uh, it, it this mould surface is, is absolutely amazing, uh, apart from the odd repair that I've got to affect. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so this epoxy has gone off up in here. Let's have a look. You can see here, here's the repair here. Now I've just prepared basically back about a foot on either side of the wound and all the way in underneath, all been sanded clean and now ready to be glassed. So I'm gonna glass that entire repair there all in one sitting and I'm gonna put about probably four or five layers of 600 double bias and I'm just going to smash it and also this hole here this is where this steel bar has protruded through that when the nose is broken down so I'm going to patch this up with a heap of glass and then repair it from the inside so I'll start with some smaller ones and go larger until I get a, a patch of around about oh, I don't know probably about six or eight inches around that Okay, um, eight very monotonous layers above my head. So here is all repaired. This was the seam here. Uh, the actual dent here is now repaired. And up under here, I've put in eight layers of 600 double bias with a few more layers of about 600 woven rovings. Now, that may not be enough i might need to still do some more bracing but what i now intend to do is i'll cut a piece of wood here cut it with a hole saw and glass it in there and tab it in place to tie it back into this steel thing before i remove the acroprop i think that's pretty important i think i think that'll be pretty important in in securing the whole thing before i then start to prop up underneath this mold and i need to put a number of 
extra props under it because I've noticed as I'm walking around on a particular when there's two or three of us walking around on there's a lot of spring in the deck I don't want uh, a premature release of the gel coat when I decide to lay it up so very important I'm going to put a heap of props underneath certain areas that are a little bit spongy to avoid any of that flexing in the deck but for now that repair is done Torque. Get the bottom. Get the bottom. Get the bottom. Right up. That's it. Take it out of the side. Oh no, we can't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're right. We better get up. We better get out of the side, mate. We better get out of the side. Yeah, you're gonna kill me. What's that hole? Sorry, I didn't. Well, I'm leaving. Yeah. All right. Okay, where's your little bit of ropes we can use for now? Well, we don't need much because we're going to come to here, aren't you? Like, how can we come to here? We can't. You want to tie through here? Well, it's a good job we got the tent up on Friday because uh, I had the weekend off, had some friends come down, went sailing, and Jeff and Dagmar we went sailing with them, and then we went uh, sea kayaking on Sunday, just the best weekend I think I've had for years. Um, came in Monday morning, it's pouring all week, it's stopped now, but yesterday afternoon, Johnny and I got into a bit of trouble. The water was just shooting in through the tent, the wind was howling, and in here it was like a swimming pool, it was basically pouring in, and every time we moved, there was another dangerous area to slip on. So this tarpaulin, as you can see up along the back here, actually um, meshes the part that the tent doesn't deal with and allows the water to flow off. So we put it on the outside there. It doesn't look that great from the outside, but it certainly is brilliant from the inside. So I've got another, one going over this side. Just to... Storm yesterday, and the realization that my tent wasn't wide enough, <laughs> I've tarped it tarp the hell out of the whole job so we've now got tarps all the way up inside and if you come through here I'm gonna create a walkway in here that's clean because in there is absolutely disgusting and then we're gonna walk down the side here have a look at the outside of the site and I've done the same here so I've tarped it all the way along so at least now I'm in a, a waterproof bubble I'm gonna get in here the Savo with my uh, my weed whacker whipper snipper and smash the crap out of all these weeds and tidy the whole place up <coughs> And uh, before I go home, I'm going to get this repair done up in here. And the whole place is now sheltered from the rain all the way around. I'm now ready to finally start repairing after several weeks, probably two to three weeks of site preparation, tent preparation, welding, all that stuff. I'm now ready to get going. Happy, now we've moved inside and we're starting to look at how we're gonna repair this slot in the middle here. Now I've actually cut through the anti-slip along this line here. Um, as a result, it's gonna look like crap if I just fix it and pull a mold of it. So what I need to do, I had to go off center because on the top there's a brace that runs down the center. So when I was cutting it in half, I couldn't physically cut where I wanted to. I had to cut off to the side of it. And, uh, and back then when I didn't know better, I didn't really consider the ramifications of that. The ramifications are starting to come true now. You can see this smooth section here. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna make down the center there, I've made it 80 mil wide, um, just to ensure that it will be one smooth strip straight down the center and thereby eliminate the, uh, the gash down the center of the smooth section. And also along here, where the in between in this window mulligan here, and this is actually the mast step right here. This will be polished flat, repaired, polished flat, and then it won't um, show in the end product. I can simply polish that back in the gel coat. So yeah, a lot of work to do here. I've got quite a lot of work to get done.
by cutting this, I've got to try to make a clear, smooth transition. And my idea is to make it smooth like this all the way through here. So that's what this line is. Basically, that's better. I reckon that's it, John. So all this will now be smooth. Now I'm going to blow my own trumpet here. When I pieced this deck mold together, I think I did a pretty spectacular job. Given that it was sitting on top of the hull mold and collapsing, I had it jacked up with car jacks and the like and bits of wood in the works. And, and that it was a long, long time ago. Now, as I uh, gloated my own um, self-importance, I think I've really cocked up up here. Now that I'm up at this area up here, for the most part, other than the dodgy cut down the guts of the thing, I've pretty much done a good job, except for up at the back and up at the front. So I'm just gonna show you what I mean. I've got about six to seven millimeters of difference in an area forward of this, um, this hatch here, right up into this area here. So I need to recut the slot and re-repair it. It's brilliant down right to the end of that red hatch there. But once you go forward, the lines of separation start to increase and to fair that out, particularly um, over the, the space of the, of the actual mold, it's gonna be a lot easier to simply cut it and rejoin it. Now, that's gonna be a bit of an effort. Okay, I've just spent a good hour underneath with some props and I've cleaned this right up. What I've done is I've actually removed about five millimeters of the actual glass that I've put in there because I fear that it was pushing it apart. Now it's looking a lot more reasonable. We've got down to around about three or four millimeters here and down here, there's going to be virtually no fairing required along here. So that was successful. What I'll do is I'm going to feed up from underneath um, a mixture of cotton flock and vinyl ester resin and what that'll do it'll make like a filleting compound to fill that gap then I'll be able to lay laminates along the length underneath probably four or five layers of um, 1200 and 600 double bias just to tie this back together again and then I'll start a restorative work on the face of it here 